All right, let's go. Sorry for the delay. If you're currently, if you're currently just um, looking for this meeting, I'm very sorry. Um, I I don't know what happened. I hope I fixed it, and I hope eventually you'll be able to join the meeting. So, um, so yesterday pretty much did a lot of one point two everything I wanted to do. So today, uh, I'm going to move on to 1.3, which is more, I mean, everything in chapter one is review. Um, it's called, what's it called? Yeah. New function from old functions. Um, so, uh so how do we things we can do to a function to get another function or to two functions um well the first thing i'm gonna i have my graph book there so we can try all those things um so These things, so I'm going to talk about translations of a function. It's fine, Eli. You're fine. It was probably my fault. I just started as well. Uh, so, um, say we have a function and it's graph which has translation. I guess I should say go function f y equals f of x. So um, here are some similar functions. So um, what happens, for example, if we, so we have our function, our graph, what happens if instead of doing y equals f of x, you do y equals f of x? Plus three. So we so say we have a new function p of x equals f of x plus three. It'll move the graph up three points. All right, yeah, that's it. Perfect. It'll move the graph. Uh maybe I don't wanna draw it myself. Maybe I'm just gonna show you on the fancy computer. So let's say I'm going to graph f of x plus 3. So so, here, so here's a random function. As you can see, I mean, that's some formula. Doesn't matter at all what it is. Uh, you know, let me draw. Oh, you are. You're just laggy. Um, so, there's some function. It has some formula. Uh, I wouldn't know how to draw this probably without a computer. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the computer drew it for me. So what happens if I now do a, a new function g of x, which is going to be given by f of x and then f3? Well, this point, for example, it's telling me that f of uh, negative 5 is negative 0.65. So what's g of negative 5 going to be? It's going to be, well, this formula says 
g is f plus 3, which is um, 235. So that means that I should be drawing the point. Well, if g of negative 5, so g of negative 5 is this number. The new graph should go through, should have a, a point which has this x coordinate and this y coordinate, 235. So probably it's going to go through um, here. So what is this? It's the same point, except uh, it's three units up. No, no, what did I do? No. And likewise, this point is going to go three units up to negative uh, 41. This point is going to go three units up to a point very close to zero. This is going to move three units up. And then what am I going to get? I'm going to get something uh, pretty much like this. Um, whoop. See how well I did. This is so entertaining trying to draw it before plotting it. All right, close enough. So, um, so I, I add three to the function. Uh, the whole graph just moves up by three units. Uh, I think that message wasn't for me. Um, so adding adding something to a function uh, changes the height. So I can see that pretty well. I think if I go, if I make a slider like this, uh, you can see that as as this number that I'm adding changes the function, the graph just moves. If I click, click. Um, so and if I add zero, then I don't do anything. I get the same function. If I add a negative number, then the function gets translated down. So maybe let me write it down here to so keep track of what we're doing. So what happens now if I what happens if I instead of doing this uh, if I add three to the um, uh, to the x if I instead of replacing Instead of adding three before doing the function, I add I add a constant afterwards. So the question is, what is going to be the graph of that? Oh, uh, spoiler! Ah, uh, minus two. It'll shift. Um, oh, f x minus two. Yeah. Oh, then that's going to shift two units to the right. Uh, that's right. Thank you, Pascal. So, um, yeah. So let's see. Let's, let's try to. I'm gonna try to guess still. Um, just based on the based on these points that I have here. So, like before, the fact that I have this point over here tells me that f of negative five is negative point sixty five. So if I have g of x equals to f of x minus two, minus two, um, I don't really know from here. I don't know what g of uh, negative five is because that is f of negative seven. I guess f of negative seven 
this realm here. So the new graph is probably going to go down here. But what I what I get from this equation um, is that g of negative three is f of negative. Uh, well, I said subtract two. So g of negative three is this number. So this point that uh, was here, now what happens to it is that it moves two to the right, like Pascal was saying, and with, with it move all the points. So the new graph that we're going to get is going to be translated for uh, translated to the right. So did I do it right? Not really. <laughs> um, so uh, it translates to the right. So um, let's see. Let's do this again. If you see that if I change the constant that I add, if I if I subtract a number, it moves to the right. If I add a number, it goes to the left. If I make this a plus, you can see positive numbers move to the uh, left. Negative numbers move me to the right, which is which I find very confusing. Um, I mean, you got to remember. I mean, what I do to remember this is that. When you do something to the x, the um, what happens is the opposite thing that when you do it for the right. So if I if I let me go back to here. Here, um, no. Here, um, if you know y is f of x, so I'm saying that g of x is y plus three. I'm adding three to the y. That has the opposite effect of adding three to. I mean, the opposite. This moves it up, and doing this to the x moves it left, which is it, it is in the negative direction. So. Um, subtracting. Hey, wait, I'm writing this, but it's all in the book. If you, you know, in the future, if you go, uh, if you see a function that's like this and you don't remember uh, what it's like, you can just go to section 1.3 in the book and see what each operation does to a function. So, um, like I said, if you, if you subtract c, you go to the right. If, uh, if you subtract, I mean, if you subtract a positive number, you go to the right. If you subtract a negative number, you go left. No, not to a function. Oh my god, not to a function. Two x. If we go the other way, um, if we substitute x by x plus c, the graph moves left by c. Okay. Um, are there any questions?
Oh, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, so that's uh, what happens when we add things. So now, um, what happens when we multiply? Here. <clears throat> so, um, if I have some function, okay, great. Thank you, Zoom. Um, y equals. So I have a function here. So, what do I think y equals two f of x is going to look like? Actually, um, let's let's try it here. So now I'm going to do do y equals two f of x. So um, maybe you see in the pattern everything you do to a function. Every operation write, you write outside the function. So this means first you, you take x, you do f of x, and then you multiply by 2. The things that you do after take the y coordinate, and the things that you do before the function affect the x coordinate. So what happens when I multiply everything by 2? Um, so here, I have a point with y coordinate negative 0.65, so it's going to get, y coordinate is going to get multiplied by 2. And now I'm going to go, um, so um, it's going to be something like negative. 1.3. So I'm um, double the distance from, from the x axis. And what happens if everything is double the distance from the x axis? What happens is you get, that's not what you get. Oh, that's, that's terrible. You get a graph that looks stretched out. Like this. I don't know. I don't know how to draw this. I'm not inspired today. You get a graph that looks like this. Um, it's. I'm not liking this function for this example. So this other function, um, what happens is that it gets stretched. Um, maybe you zoom out this function. So for some reason, it looks like a parabola. And what what happens is that every every y coordinate. So at every point, y the the height of the blue thing is double the height of the red thing. I mean, it seems like horizontally they're a bit closer than it seems, but the blue one is indeed twice as stretched as the as the red one. So this is a useful thing for drawing functions. Um, so if I was gonna. So what does this function look like? Um, it looks something like this. That's not very good. But anyway, multiplying f by a constant. Stretches it. I'm going to say a positive constant. Stretches it by by a factor of 
Um, let's see. <clears throat> so, yeah, while well, we're at it, let's see what happens if I change the, the number here. So, I mean, well, if I multiply by zero, the function I get is zero. If I multiply by one, then I get the exact same function. Because multiplying by one is not doing anything. And then if I multiply by a bigger and bigger number, it gets more and more stretched. The parts, the places where the function is zero, of course, nothing can happen to them. If f of seven is zero, seven times zero is going to be zero. It's going to be going to stay in the same spot. But where it's negative, it gets more negative. Where it's positive, it gets more positive. And what happens if I multiply by numbers smaller than one? If I multiply by one half, well, that means that it gets half as tall. So now you can see this parabola is exactly half as tall as the other one. And this one is five times shorter. Um, so what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen if I multiply x by a constant? So maybe one will flip it. I'm getting there. Oh, there's a lot of questions. Oh. I forgot whether going higher or lower in the number will make it shrink or expand. So if you multiply the function by a big number, it will make it expand. Uh, but if you multiply x by, by a number, so this was causing stretching. And we're doing it to the y, uh, because it's the last thing we're doing. Um, this Here we're doing something to the x, so it's going to be something that happens horizontally, but it's the opposite of what you would think. This is going to call uh, cause um, contracting. Or compressing, yeah. Um, very, not very good. Oh my god, I mean the other vertically horizontally. I ordered the tablet, it's arriving next week, so my handwriting is supposed to get better. So, you're gonna take this function and you're gonna sort of squish it towards the y axis. Let's see. Uh, so what am I going to get when I do f of 2x? I'm going to get the same function. I mean, it's kind of similar to what you get when you stretch it um, vertically, but not quite the same. x equals 0 stays in place. And now what happens is that this point 1 negative 2 something comes over here, 1, negative 2, whatever, 2.3. Uh, this is half the distance on the y-axis. This point negative 5, whatever, ends up here as the point half the x-coordinate, negative 1.1, whatever. Uh, because if f of, ne of negative 5 is negative 1.2, that's going to mean, and I call this g of x, that's going to mean that g of negative 2.5, if I'm calling, what, what am I calling g? g is the result of multiplying by 2 and then doing f. And that's not what I... So you take your number, which is negative 2.5, and you multiply it by 2. And then you do f. 
So when you multiply by two, you get negative five. So you get negative 1.2. So this is the X coordinate, this is the Y coordinate. You end up over here. You can see in every other point, you can see that it is the the blue graph is half the distance from the from the y-axis as the red graph. And the point with x coordinate zero is just going to stay in place because when you multiply x by a number uh, zero by a number, you're still going to get zero. So Maybe at this point you can guess what happens if you multiply by a number that's smaller than one. It's going to stretch instead of compressing. This I also get very good. I never remember what thing stresses and what um, stretches and what compresses. But one thing that always works is you do an example and you see what happens then. And if, it, if it's going to stretch it in one example, it's going to stretch it in all the examples because the reasoning is the same. If you multiply by zero, then you just get, this is f of zero everywhere. So this is just always negative uh, 3.41. If you stretch by one, nothing happens. If you stretch by a small number, if you multiply x by a small number, it gets way bigger. If you multiply x by a big number, it's uh, skinnier. So what happens, um, anonymous frog, anonymous dog, anonymous hedgehog, Google is kind of okay insulting some of you. <clears throat> um, so what about multiplying by a negative number? So, um, so multiplying by a negative number by negative c so is like multiplying by negative one and then c. So I, I really only need to understand what happens when I multiply by negative one. So uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, um, here. So, I mean, maybe you can guess from what is, well, well you can guess now because I just showed you. As I approach, um, let's see what happens when C is negative one. When C is negative one, Multiplying, so multiplying by C after I do the function, meaning I'm doing this to the Y coordinate. Um, well, this point had height negative uh, 1.1, the new point. I have no idea what that means, Justin, just no clue. Um, I start with a point at height negative 1.1. The point after I do this is going to be at height 1.1. Here I have a point at height negative 3.4. I end up at height positive 3.4. So what is the effect of doing this? Um, the effect of doing this is that I take the graph and I mirror it vertically. So, um, so that's it. And what happens if we multiply by negative two? Well, that's like doing a vertical mirror and then stretching by two or by, by two negative four. I mirror and then I stretch reflection across the x-axis, exactly. Um, so you can probably guess now what happens if you Ooh, bad example. 
if you multiply the x by negative one, well, this function is unfortunately very symmetric. Um, if we multiply x by negative one, what happens is that, let me go, all the x coordinates get multiplied by negative one. So zero, doesn't, it doesn't, nothing happens to it, but negative five becomes five, uh, negative seven becomes seven, and so on. And that amounts to, um, that amounts to diagonal reflection. So, reflection across the x axis uh, placing x by negative x so if everywhere in the funk in the formula right like this so it's clear equals f of x by y equals f of negative x amounts to a uh, reflection across the um, uh, y-axis and if you don't remember which is which uh, well you can a reflection across the the uh, x-axis is the one where you change the y coordinates, but also you can just do an example and see what happens. So um, here's a question. If I can pull it off. <clears throat> so what happens if I do both? Um, what happens if I do a reflection across the reflect vertically or then horizontally. What happens if I reflect vertically and then horizontally? Um, So what happens if I start with a function and I change it into, I do a vertical reflection, and then I do a horizontal reflection as well. Reflection across the origin axis. Reflected symmetric um, any other options? I can't think of a lot of options. Let's see, can I follow you? <clears throat> you see the poll? You yeah, one vote. All right, put your votes in. Is it anonymous? I hope it is. If, if it isn't, I really don't care. I'm not really not gonna hold you accountable if you get it wrong. Sixteen people voted.
Oh, ok. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, okay. So, split down the middle between symmetry on the origin and diagonal refraction. So, the answer, um, I mean, it's not diagonal reflection. Um, good guess, but you should take a piece of paper and do two reflections to it and see what happens. Um, actually, let, let me just do that. Is it symmetry around the origin? I think that depends on what you mean. Like, uh, I think uh, if you if you interpret. If you interpret it correctly, it is, yeah. So, um, make a new slide. So, I have to do, so, start with a, a face that just says, well, he has the nose facing left. That's how you know. He only has one ear. So, if I do, um a uh, uh, reflection on this axis what do i get i get i feel like i get something like this the nose is still facing to our left and the ear is still on our right so then if I do a horizontal reflection this way, what do I get? Um, well, well, the eyes are going to look sort of the same. I was trying to draw equal eyes, even though I failed a little bit. The nose is going to be facing the other way. And the ear is going to be on the on the left now. So what happened here? I mean, you could say that you reflected um, across the center of the nose. You know, here this eye was here, and now it's opposite respect to the center. Uh, you could also say what happened is that. I turn 180 degrees, which I didn't put on the ball. It's the most what you do around the center. Um, I should have put something else as an option. If you rotate this face 180 degrees, you get this face. So um, there you go. When you do reflections, you get a rotation. So going back here, um, degrees around the origin, which is where the two axes um, cross each other. Let's see if I'm right. Negative f of negative x. That is a rotation of 180 degrees around the origin. Look at that. <clears throat> uh, All right. Well, I guess that's going to be basically it. Um, so, one thing I skipped in section uh, 1.1 is that we call a function even if f of negative x equals f of x, uh, which means that its graph is symmetric. Uh, metric across, around, about, I'm going to say about the vertical axis. 
um, we call a function f odd if f of negative x equals negative f of negative x, uh, negative uh, f of x. For uh, multiplying both sides by negative one, this would mean that f of x equals negative f of negative x, which means that its graph is symmetric around uh, the origin. So why is this true? If you're if you're even, you look like this, not like that. You look like this. Um, if I if I do f of x, I look like this. If I do f of negative x, they're supposed to be the same function. It means that when I reflect across this mirror, I get the exact same thing, except that my drawing is not great. Um, so, um, so, so that's why this formula is going to make it symmetric. And if a function is odd, like this function, when I do um, 180 degree rotation, which means do negative f of negative x, I get this exact same thing. And that would make it odd. And why do we call them even an odd? I'm pretty sure it's because um, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the 10, x to an even power is always an even function and x to an odd power is always um, an odd function. Not the only functions, but the only examples, but definitely the most important ones. I, I mean, I started late, but I'm gonna call it there because you have someone, 